little bit of time to gather some reference. <clears throat> and this is just a collection. This is definitely not all of the reference that I've gathered. But some things that uh, I'm looking to hit up. Um, some color and value structure here and what, uh, what happens. This is the kind of lighting that I'm kind of looking for. Um, as far as color and value and the brightness of the sky. We're also going to take a look at the colors of lights. Although we'll look specifically for that uh, in reference like this. Um, and seeing how large structures like this, I believe this building's in Dubai, how the light, the color of the light, the value of the light, and uh, just how this building sits against the sky. Um, so I'll have multiple of these as well, not just one, but I'll have, you know, as many as I can find that, that I think is good. Um, and this as well had a, a nice kind of uh, color that, I'm, that I want my painting to push towards and just that bright value at nighttime is and looking at this kind of reference you realize that it's not as dark as you know we think at, at night times um, it can get pretty dark but uh, it's definitely not as dark as we think um, a lot of people will tend to do a night shot um, like this where they'll grade the whole thing down and they'll say well that's an that's at night and it may work in some exposures but we're looking to get to get a lot of detail out of here and make it early evening so it's not you know it's not 10 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night we're looking around six or seven o'clock which you get a lot of this kind of stuff which i really like because you can see a lot of detail and we're also going to look at the type of sand reference that we're talking about this is i believe this is a photo from iceland which has a lot of this type of environments uh, almost a volcanic kind of black sands type of look that um, we want to incorporate into our, our painting. Again, I think this shot is also from uh, Iceland. Um, I really like these vertical structures that were sticking out, and that's one of the things that uh, our painting is calling for. So it's definitely uh, a nice reference as far as what they look like and um, how we can kind of make them alien looking. If I painted out these horses, this would look almost like an alien planet, which was, was really nice. And then some ideas as far as um, the smoke coming out of stuff, making this really uh, moody and dramatic by having this type of stuff in there. And I'm going to throw that in my reference as well. So we have a good amount of reference. Uh, this is definitely not everything, but uh, just a select few of some of the better ones that I wanted to show. And on top of that, usually I'll, when I gather my photographic elements for all the stuff that I want in my painting, I'll also take a look at some movies that I, wanna, I want my shot to look like or have the same kind of lighting to see how the DP or director of photography shot that scene and how they color corrected it, how, how they color graded the film in uh, DI and how it ultimately came out. So the first one here, which uh, is from one of the films I really like, um, one of my favorite directors, Ridley Scott, Prometheus. I really like the look of this film. And this is the kind of lighting that I'm going for. And uh, when I saw this, I kind of knew I was in the right direction. And it kind of inspired me to make something, you know, that felt it was in that Prometheus world. So this is definitely the lighting condition we're going to. And it has that nice evening look, but bright, and you can see all the details and that nice color that we're, we're going to try to hit. Uh, this is another example of a uh, different value structure, you know, the dark ground versus the light sky. We're going to try to incorporate that as well uh, into, our, uh, into our painting, but really nice color and uh, value structures, beautifully shot. Another um, still from Prometheus um, that had the vertical rock sticking out. I like that. This has the same kind of sand that we're talking about, that, that uh, black sand, almost volcanic, and uh, rock structures around. So we're going to try to mimic this look and bring it into our own painting. And this is from Skyfall. Again, this early evening um, type of shot where you really get the cool values. And it's not pitch black, you know, there's a lot of value. The sky is, is bright, brighter than we think. And um, just the overall nice mood and color in this as well. So I'll have this reference up as well on top of my photographic reference. And um, 
you know, it's it's not uh, it's actually a really good idea to take a look at some of your some films or some films that you really like. Take a look at how the director, or, you know, director of photography shot the scene, how they how the director kind of color graded it for the final shot and uh, created the mood that he's looking for and the lighting that he's looking for um, and apply some of that same principles into your painting. So we're definitely going to take advantage of this. We're going to try to go for maybe a Prometheus looking feel in this type of lighting and this type of color. And so we have all this information. We're going to do a value sketch. and. Again, I looked for some reference, and one of the references that I found was something like this, which was close to some of the value structures that's happening here, where if we threw a hue and saturation on top of this to t take a look at our, our values. Let me drag my layer stack here as well so you can see. Put that on color mode we can see that the ground is fairly dark and the sky lighter and this has the same feel the low key kind of dark values on the on the uh, on the ground and the lighter sky so and this has distant kind of uh, mountain uh, structure uh, mountains in the background that we'll want to mimic and put into our painting and uh, we have i'm thinking of maybe having some rock structures so i like the values of this photograph and this is it's close to the color as well although we won't we won't have we're gonna have to work with our plate and color correct this but there's definitely no no grass so we won't be uh, paying attention to that we're just looking at the value structure so we'll base our value structure on this we're gonna do a, uh, a quick half an hour study and block in our composition and block in our value structure based on this and uh, start a painting from there all right so let's start this sketch and I bring in that reference image and I put it on top of my canvas now I've set my resolution to be at 1920 by 918 kind of a film kind of crop that I like so I'm just gonna desaturate that with a hue and saturation on top of it so that I can see the values and I duplicate it and I throw that dust and scratches on it so that it allows me only to concentrate on big value and not any details and that's um, what I want to include in my painting. So I'm going to keep that on top of my canvas and I'm going to sketch from that. And just grab a brush here and start laying in um, some values. Before I do that, I like to do just an orga organizational type of deal where I'll just grab the size of that canvas and I'll throw it on a... Um, clipping mask so that everything I paint stays in that white area right now if I, I can paint into that black area which I don't want you'll see what happens is it fills the it fills the entire thing so I'll grab a selection I'll create a new group on top of everything throw it in the clipping mask there and then paint on a layer um, like that and then it crops it to my uh, my image size and then I'll start picking up values and every element will probably be on a separate layer so I'll throw down some values and usually I'll start with the most dominant value which is the ground currently and I'm not looking to nail the value straight away I'll throw down my values for everything and then I'm going to adjust them as I go along so you know you block in the uh, the ground which is your biggest value and then your sky which is another big value and in this case I just color corrected the sky underneath it with a levels to try to get the the correct value and I'll just paint some some darker bits because it's darker and I'll go back and forth again I'm not trying to nail it on the first try I want to put everything down and then go back and selectively adjust things um, as I need to so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start blocking in a uh, a rock structure here, and again trying to match the value of of the reference. And this is how we use it. We're using the value of the reference as essentially that just reference. I'm not looking to duplicate it. 
I want to apply the same type of lighting and value structure into my painting. So I'm going to build uh, my scene up the way I want, but using this, the value structure of the uh, reference image. And this is this is how you can guarantee kind of your lighting and your values to be accurate is that you're basing it off of uh, a photograph reference and applying it to your own scene. So, and again, it's a good thing to always do value studies as well um, because it helps you kind of build up a bank of all this, uh, all these types of different lighting conditions. And you can see that I like working uh, kind of zoomed out like this because uh, I'm not I'm not noodling with details as far as you know scratches and um, kind of rock details. I'm only looking for shapes and silhouettes. And sometimes I'll get carried away because it's fun to kind of paint the details. But uh, for this, you want to keep it to about half an hour. This is uh, how long me, how long it took me to do this sketch. And I took my time with it. I could have um, done a lot faster, but um, I enjoy it, so I take my time. And I try to knock everything I need to in that time span. So you can see the rock formations that I'm looking for, um, pretty massive, pretty dominating. And um, the ground pretty dark, it's dark sand, so it's not going to be uh, very reflective. Now I'm going to start blocking in kind of uh, the sky with uh, potentially some perspective. I like the fact that the, the cloud formation up top had some perspective in it, so it creates depth even in the sky. It's um, it's not flat. There's it. It feels like it's coming above our heads and going into the scene, and that's the same type of feeling that we want um, in our painting to really feel deep. Now, this um, this may not you know things that I'm painting may not even uh, be a hundred percent. Like I may make that uh, rock structure maybe smaller or you know move it a little to the left. This isn't uh, a kind of be all end all uh, sketch. It's more to knock down your value structure and your lighting direction that you're thinking about. And um, you can also block in composition. So all the different elements that I'm looking to throw in my shot will be in here. And uh, any ideas I may have as far as uh, cool things that I want to include, I'll throw it in here so I don't forget them. And to kind of uh, note it here. And I'll usually go from there. Just blocking in the uh, brightness of the sky. You can do this all on separate layers or all on one layer. I like to work on separate layers so that it gives me more control um, if I need to change things around or I paint a new layer and I need to adjust the values it's easy to, uh, to make those adjustments when they're on separate layers so here I'm looking at the value of the back mountain there and blocking in uh, a really distant mountain uh, mountainscape back there and this isn't going to be the final kind of shape or um, style of those mountains back there but this gives me an idea of something at that value can be there and I'll go look for reference when I have this sketch now of all these different elements so this is another reason that um, this helps is to have this sketch is it gives me um, a kind of starting point on the type of reference that I'm going to need to do this map painting so for example the ground that I'm looking for is going to be uh, dark sandy um, kind of rocky uh, ground um, uh, texture or, or photograph so I'm gonna look for that specifically and then I have that left mountain back there and a the type of rock it is um, I want it to be really uh, look kind of alien and aggressive not your typical kind of green mountain type almost um, almost volcanic but not not quite there and uh, again we're trying to create a mood 
I know we have uh, the feeling of uh, we want to go for kind of a Prometheus uh, movie uh, feeling to it and that's going to come with a lot of the the shape language and the lighting and color that we throw into this so we started with the lighting which is low key which is going to get us there the color we're not really studying here we're going to adjust that in our painting it's going to be a uh, a cool kind of environment and you can see here i'm putting in the uh, that road that i was talking about kind of going all the way into the um, into the distance there and I also like to flip my canvas here and there just so it gives me a fresh eye it helps me to judge the composition a lot better and determine if it's um, if it's a balanced composition or it needs breakup in areas so here I'm adding a, a light pass to that road to suggest that you know there's some type of lighting in this environment and maybe the road is catching glints here and there and then you see me breaking it up and I like to do that on a separate layer clipped on to my main road uh, shape that I painted so that I can erase into it and adjust the value as I need to and then I ordered through on a clipping mask there to paint out so maybe there's some rocks on this environment it's cutting out this this road it's not going to be a perfect straight line and these again these are some ideas that um, I want to incorporate in uh, in my painting so just painting that in painting it in painting it out trying to find a good kind of balance between them and then I decided to make it a little darker so I'm gonna throw levels and that's why the uh, having it on separate layers is Im is important because I can adjust that light value separately and you can see me here pulling down the opacity or I can go into the base and tone that down as well so just sample the color off the plate here and I want to throw in maybe a, uh, a building structure something here that uh, resembles maybe a really massive skyscraper here in the middle of this environment that they're building I want to go for uh, kind of a building in progress uh, type of feeling and again this might not be the final design of the of the building or the final placement per se although you want to block in your composition as strong as possible on this so you're not trying to figure it out later but put down the broad strokes in this painting and you can see I'm using the line tool here to add those uh, the scaffolding and and uh, that half built kind of feel and again, I'm not trying to look for realism here but just a suggestion of what I like to see in the final so I just turned up the thickness of that the line so we can it can show up a little better and I'm just literally taking and just painting with the line tool um, real fast and real simple we're not getting into you know really detailed stuff here we just want to um, kind of hint at you know there's gonna be something like this there that we're gonna paint uh, later on it's more for idea gathering than anything I put that one on the left side and decided no four is too kind of symmetrical so I took it out so here we're going to try to create some a light pass here and block in our lighting direction so just taking the lasso tool and I'm going to grab a semi textured brush here and just turn up my value just a little bit and paint into it and because this is on a separate layer I can adjust the value of that light if I need to or erase into it and paint into it without affecting what's underneath it so that's that's uh, the good part about uh, painting on separate layers so again baking in just 
drawing in simple shapes um, just to sell the direction. This isn't going to be the actual look of the building. But just um, just to block in some of, some of the planes that may be on this and how where I want those lighting planes to come in and, and light this guy up. So thinking about forms, lighting, which surfaces, if this is going to be 3D, this is going to give me an idea of how to light this. So, you know, we have a light coming in from the, the right right now and a top light maybe to catch the top facing surfaces to add some form. And we're going to have shadows um, as well on some some of the shapes that are in front of others to add form to this guy. And you can see me knocking down some of those planes to make it read a little better. And I'm just going to hit it with some top light, again on a separate layer, so I can erase into it if I need to. And again, this is good for uh, 3D lighting as well, because it's going to it's going to set the stage for how I light this guy in 3D if I were to do it. How my light setup would be, what kind of forms I'm looking to get out of my model, and uh, the values as well. Although the values can be, again, adjusted when I render out passes for the 3D, but I want to kind of set a, a tone with this painting so I have a, a target to aim for in 3D. going to knock down some of the values uh, at the bottom there just because uh, I want to sit in a little bit better with the ground and just some adjustments here just in the ground value it's still not as dark as uh, what the reference is and we can add some adjustments on top of this uh, later to get it there. But um, so far, all the elements that I'm painting together match are in the same kind of space. So, and this is me doing some noodling. This is unnecessary, but um, it's just, uh, I guess it's just fun to do, to get in there and try to simplify the, the shapes. want that ground to feel a little bit straighter like like in the reference it was getting too curvy and it was kind of hurting the scale of it so I kind of flatten that out so we can match the reference a little better and then we'll have more rocky kind of areas on the other side to contrast it and here I'm just gonna sample uh, a value off the sky to do some haze there's some haze at the bottom of that in the reference photo and that's something I want to kind of mimic as well to sell scale on this guy and how far back it is in in depth so I'm gonna adjust the values here and just paint out where I don't want it to affect So see if I like that taking a look at it and I feel like it was still too bright so I'm gonna knock it down and try to get it to the same kind of value that the reference was in and here I'm going to add a little bit of a lighting direction and some form to that rock structure so we're saying uh, this rock is also getting hit by that light and it's going to light that face up a little bit just painting in with the lasso tool And just fill it again on a separate layer so that we can adjust this guy. And just trying to find different forms. Some interesting shapes. Again, doesn't have to be too kind of too uh, rock-like because it's just what it's trying to say is just the lighting direction. That's all we're trying to get out of this guy. 
and you can see in the reference we're getting that light value too where it's getting hit by light now mine is a little too bright and I'll knock it down but um, we're gonna try to match kinda the intensity or something close to the intensity of that reference uh, reference image Just painting in some some other shapes here some top like and hit from up there add some form to those those further ones maybe this is you know three different um, rock shapes put together into one silhouette that's something we can figure out later um, it's not really an absolute necessity right now we want to just adjust the shape of this guy maybe not Wrote, flip our canvas to get a fresh eye on it to make sure everything's legit and we maybe add another kind of rock feature over there bringing our eye back to our focal point which is the building there judging it looking at it taking time to see what's working what's not compositionally what else I can possibly add to this to all the any ideas that I may have to throw down on this to um, to put in our final painting and I decided I want to go maybe layer the uh, the background mountains a little bit more so there's a little bit more of a transition between the big uh, left rock there and what's behind before it was just too big of a jump in value so this will help us kind of sit things properly in depth. There was a tangent there, so I wanted to fix that. See, there's another tangent here, so I'm going to be like, how should we do this? And I'll just flow it down to that so we create a, a V-shape. And then I lifted that guy up because his value was a little too dark. And this is this is noodling, but uh, it's fun, so I'm just gonna do it. Just maybe there is some snow on these top, um, these top mountains there. This is supposed to be a really cold environment uh, with the blues we're trying to go for. So maybe in the high altitude areas, there's some buildup of uh, buildup of snow, kind of snow capped mountains in the back. So I'm just going to noodle that in. Again, probably unnecessary, but. Um, Unless there were definitely an idea that I wanted to get across in my painting, then I'll throw that in there so I don't forget the type of mountain that I'm thinking of, of painting. Lift that guy up. And again, some of these things might change compositionally. It's not going to... It's not going to change as far as value wise and that's why we do a value sketch but compositionally I may move things to the left a little bit to the right up and down um, it definitely is going to look something similar to this it's not going to be completely different so it's just minor adjustments here and there that I'll do later on just adding some lighter values in the sky there like a reference and we're close to wrapping this guy up, I think, turning on that haze there. What we want to do is now throw in some of those uh, kind of spiky rocks to give this a little bit more of a interesting feel. Maybe a alien type kind of planet that we haven't seen that they're exploring, they're building maybe a refinery or um, some kind of uh, an outpost, uh, kind of a 
for people to military action who knows we can make up tons of stories but so I want these rock formations and I just duplicate it over and I'm just gonna edit the shape of this guy so it's not identical again it probably wouldn't matter for our case because we got the point across with the um, the pointy the pointy uh, vertical rocks that's all we wanted to kind of say in this and I'm paying attention to the values it's, it's further back in the distance so the the levels are going to be different than those foreground rocks foreground spiky rocks that I had so you always want to pay attention to that value structure as well now I'm just going to paint some smaller tiny rocks just to let myself know that uh, this is going to be um, Wherever there's a big rock, there's small ones around it as well. And these might be either kind of 3D or photo reference. That's something we still got to figure out with our plan of action. And now I'm going to add some kind of darker streaks to this guy just to break up those uh, the uh, the flat value again probably unnecessary because we want to group the values in, uh, into almost one and use only three or four and then turning on my dust and scratches there I noticed that there's dark patches um, in the uh, in the landscape there that I want to put in and here is where I start grading it. I found that my value was a little too bright compared to the reference. So now I'm just going to go back and adjust it. And I'll go back and I need to do adjustments on several different layers, which is fine. Because it's all organized and easy to select. Choose all the different layers, just a quick grade to bring that back into um, back into the reference uh, images value structure and then I had to dar darken down my rocks because they were disappearing the values were now too bright for what was behind it so bring those black back down and darker and put our road just fix the road's brightness because now it's feeling too bright since it's now against a darker um, ground. And yeah, just some minor tweaks here and there. The fog, maybe, I mean, the, the haze there may be a little too bright, so knock that back down. So you can see how having that reference above my image helps. Uh, and I'm not necessarily painting that environment, but I can use that value structure and exposure for my own painting in my own environment. So it becomes very, very handy. And typically if I'm painting something that I haven't painted before or that I'm not really sure about, I'll go and look for this reference um, to help me kind of decide that the value structure and, and try to figure out the exposure. Just adding some last minute things here, probably unnecessary again, but just doing it because I have time. I set usually half an hour and then I can, if I finish before, I'll start noodling because I've just set that half an hour for myself anyway. So I'll just use it and maximize whatever I can and put whatever I want at, into, the, uh, into the painting. And just kind of breaking up that ground to kind of show maybe it's rocky, it's a rough um, ground texture. Some adjustments to the light pass on that guy. He was feeling too bright since we darkened down the base. And we should be, I mean, we're getting pretty close here. Some last things I want to do is add some highlights on some rocks on the ground that's an idea that I want to include so I'm going to get a scattered brush a hard brush and I'm going to 
put, put the scattering dynamic on it and go into the shape dynamic and just jack up the spacing change the orientation of the brush so that I can paint kind of flat um, top light rock and on a new layer I'm going to select a, a bright value off the sky and I'll adjust it um, as I go so I'm going to just carefully hit this here and there just to suggest that there's some rocks on the ground and uh, they may be kind of reflective and then I'm going to go with a, a, br a soft brush and just knock it down I'll knock it down with some levels first and then I'll go in and knock it down with a brush just here and there but that's an idea I wanted to have is have some brighter rocks on that surface and I painted it in so I don't forget about it and adds a little something and we are very close to being done the last thing I'm thinking I'm going to do is put in our vehicle traveling kind of the uh, the same kind of deal as uh, Prometheus they had a car kind of as they were traveling to the to that uh, the sphere looking thing to explore this is a kind of the same type of feeling that I want to have the car kind of going to that um, structure that they're building it may not be to explore but just traveling to it and I'm going to add uh, a light kind of top light on this guy. And I decided I want to be able to control it so I can fix the brightness. So I'm just going to paint paint that dark shape and then put the light pass on a separate layer with and clip it onto the bottom. That way I can go in and adjust it separately. And I'm judging it from a distance, how bright I want that thing to be. And I may want kind of a brighter glint on this guy since it's a vehicle and he's shiny. I'm going to grab the dodge tool and just dodge a little bit of that. So there's a glint. It may be too strong. So I'm going to just take a brush. Just knock that dodge down a little bit. I have to set my transparency on because I don't want it to paint anywhere else. And just knock it down. So that also creates a focal point as well. So we want to look at the car first, traveling along the path, and then, and then follow it to that main building. We're going to do a trail, dust trail. I'm going to grab a cloud brush and a value off the sky. And this will be the last I think touch this guy put it behind the rocks and grab that uh, go back on that dust layer paint it in and I'm gonna go and paint out of it as well to break it up a little bit a little too far there And then we're going to adjust the value, make sure it's correct. And I think we've put in everything that we wanted to put in. Again, we're going to have a lot more of those spiky rocks as well. This is just uh, kind of an idea, throw down our ideas. And I wanted to curve it down because it was feeling too, uh, didn't have enough contrast for the amount of contrast that's in the reference. So just with the simple curves, I'm going to bring down the blacks and lift the the whites so we have the same kind of expo uh, exposure and contrast as the reference image and we should be good to go on this guy alright so let's get started with our painting and looking at our plate here, we have uh, some color correction to do to get it in into the right space. And uh, we're going to base that off some of the reference that we've collected. 
But uh, before I show you guys that and we get into the PSD, I want to show you guys the final painting. And it's this guy right here. Zoom in here. Show you guys. So we have the same kind of color scheme that we were going for. The lighter sky, the black sand uh, we built on top of our plate here. Um, we added the vertical rocks that we wanted, the big kind of rock formation and distant kind of uh, building uh, in the back. Um, to show how that's done and then we added some characters on a road um, just to add a little bit of a story as well so let's take a look at uh, how this guy came to be I'm going to jump into our PSD here so this is the painting and you can see a little bit of a difference between the two paintings in the color correction of values so what happens is usually I'll flatten it out like this and I'll take it close to some ref that I was kinda of looking at to match and I'll paste it in and you know I can make this the same size and I'll compare the value structure and the color to something from film that I like so the value structure seems to be there we have the same amount of light in the sky which I like in the darker ground so that's starting to fit in there the color needs to be adjusted if I wanted to go a little bluer than that to match this all it would do then is pull up a color balance and hit it up with a little bit more blue a little bit more cyan to start getting me closer to that ballpark in that space and we're starting to get there so you can see the before and after and we can also take a look at our values values seem to be close to what we got here nice so we're good to go so I'll match it like that and that will be kind of my final uh, color correct and painting uh, values so I always you know it's good to sometimes put it against some real nice reference like Prometheus to kind of really judge where your painting is and you'll see quickly you know how close you were or how far away you were so let's do let's go back to our plate here and then see how we started using that so go back into the painting here I'm gonna turn off all these layers and this was the plate that we were given. So using this plate, I want to get in the ballpark of um, the same colors. So what I'm going to do is um, I want to first adjust my value. And I'm going to knock it down a little bit. Bring make it bigger. And then I'm going to do a color balance on top of that. Let me open up some of these stuff. So my basic value adjustment I pulled down the lights because it was too bright way too bright for the lighting condition we were going for and then pull down the mids just slightly to make it darker and then I'll throw on a color correct color balance on color mode and all I'm doing in the midtones is adjusting the cyan adding some blues into it and right now it looks really saturated because it's against black and as soon as we start adding different elements in here we should be uh, good to go here. So from there, um, I want to block in my sky. So <clears throat> I had shot some skies before, um, close to this kind of this uh, time um, at night, kind of early on, like six six thirty to seven uh, at night. And um, these are a lot of the reference images. You can see I'll make this kind of preview window bigger so you can see <clears throat> so you get the sun pretty low in the sky whoops went a little far there pretty low in the sky so it's barely visible um, and everything else is pretty much a nice cool kind of cloudy um, lighting which that's kind of what we want this nice kind of darker but uh, you know no hard source of light because it's at night and um, a nice blue sky nothing too crazy no uh, I want to keep it simple 
but have some nice details. So I grab one of these. I believe the one I used was, uh, let's see, one of these guys. So brought that in. Whoops, that's everything. Let's go to sky. Let's turn this guy off. Let's turn off our plate so you can see. I just brought in, <clears throat> excuse me. I just brought in my sky with a little bit of that city. And this is what the original looked like. And I need to grade it down a little bit because it was too bright. And then color balance to get it in the same kind of that bluish ballpark and that's by adding a little bit of blue a little bit of cyan in the mid-tones to get it into that range and then what I did was I liked the this was another reference that I had shot from the same location and it had this nice kind of mountain in the background that I wanted to keep for that horizon line so I brought that in and I just revealed the area that I wanted and then using my Hue and saturation. I now have to color correct this to match um, what's behind it. So I don't think I used the curve, so I'll just delete that. What it, it would land it nicely in the in the same kind of ballpark as far as uh, the value. So all I did was color correct it to a little bluer, and then I'll add to the color correct with the hue and saturation. And that's also on color mode and just take down the saturation so it matches the uh, the sky there. And you can see it kind of seamless. They have the same kind of lighting. And that's my sky. And there's my plate. So I blocked in my, my ground, my sky. And we, at this point, I noticed that the plate was feeling a little too noisy. And what I mean by that is that um, you can see the range from the really bright brights to the really dark darks. And um, this close together makes a really noisy image because it's happening everywhere. It's even in like these tiny little highlights against the darks. And it just makes for uh, an unpleasant thing to look at. It's just too much noise your eye typically wants to have areas of detail with areas of softness that's where uh, we get the nice pleasant kind of artwork where you know it's not packed with detail everywhere it's only in some areas and then some areas are calmer than uh, than others and we get that nice balance of uh, detail versus no detail so when I noticed that um, I wanted to cover it up with um, some of that uh, no detail, maybe even the entire thing covered up because I had before this reference that I liked. So I basically wanted to use this element and cover up the ground that I had uh, in my scene. So what I had to do was, and this was a nice high res image, so I could have used it, but before I use it, I don't want this guy in the, uh, in the shot. So what I'll do is, I'll throw it on another layer and grab uh, my clone stamp here, clone brush, with just a doesn't matter what kind of brush you use, and I'm just gonna clone out and make sure that you know it's on current layer and below or all layers. I don't have any adjustment layers on, so I can use those two options and just quickly start to clone this guy out. We want to use this element, so we want it to be clean a nice clean plate to start from and we don't want any of these kind of these tracks because uh, we don't want scale a scale issue and we don't want uh, any tracks in our shot either so I'm just quickly cloning that out and then I'm going to look for uh, repeating elements that I had cloned so I can see these two rocks were the same so I'm just going to clone that out. I can see another rock here that's the same. That's the same there. I'm going to look for repetition, obvious repetition. 
These aren't the same. That's okay. I think we're okay to use this plate now. So I clean it up. I'll merge them together and just select the ground and bring it into whoop, my painting here. So I have ground cover. So if I turn that on, Delete this guy is not being used. We now see that a lot of that noise has now disappeared. Turn that on and off again for you. Noisy, nice and calm. We still have we still retained some of that detail with the with the highlights and the dark rocks, but we got rid of the high contrast noise that we didn't want. And that's, again, using the same element over and over and over again. You can see it. I used it a bunch of times here. And it's the same color correct. So that's the plate. And then I'll start covering it up with that uh, element. And I think I just used the overall one here and disregarded these ones. You can see they didn't, don't, don't do much. But there's that element. It needed to be color corrected and uh, value adjusted. So all I did was again was you throw a curve down, curve it down just to get my value right. And again, when I judge my values with with uh, my hue and saturation on, because I had adjusted the value of my ground, so I had something to match it to. So I matched the value of the cover that I brought in with whatever I had underneath. Once my value is correct, I can start hitting my color up. And that's just with a color balance. Again, adding cyan and some blues. And we're starting to match our plate. And it felt a little saturated, a little too blue for what I for what was underneath in the plate. So I added a hue and saturation and turned down my saturation in there. And we're good to go for that for that cover. So you can see how you can find some reference, clean up that plate. like this, bring it in, adjust the value, and then adjust the color, and voila, we're done with that part. So we're happy with the ground, we blocked in our sky, and we're halfway there already. So let's see how we can now put in our mountain structure and how that works. All right, so the way that rock came together there it is right there, blocked in. And all that was, was using this element here. Again, creating high contrast mat. Control selecting it, grabbing it, copying, pasting it, and bring it into our, uh, our painting here. So let's take a look at some of these. So that, there it is right there. The first thing we're going to have to do is adjust the values. So we throw on our hue and saturation and we start throwing on our value. So what I'm going to do with this is I want to first adjust the uh, overall value of the shadow. And then I'll put on the light layer, essentially relighting this element. And the way that's done is I'll only focus on getting this entire value to match the shadow and value of the ground or maybe even darker. Um, so I had to really knock this guy down, bring down all the lights and adjust the mids just uh, to match, start matching my, my plate here on the ground. So once that was done, I did some color correction. You can see it's all whack, the color. So I went in there and what I did with my curve color correction, as you can see, it's on color. I went into my reds and I grabbed the point where it was the reddest in my shadow, kind of a mid-tone kind of shadow. I selected that point, which was, you can see where on the on the curve here it's showing up. If I go, you can see it moving around there. And when you hit that dot, and I'll move it with the arrow keys to move it up and down. And then I'll go into my blues and add blue into that region as well. So if I take away my blues, you can see by just taking away the reds, it starts getting green. And I'll go one, I'll select that point again 
and then I'll move with the arrow keys up and down up until I hit the right amount in my uh, in my curve so that's another way of color correcting and then I'll still go in with another color balance if I feel like it's a little off I'll hit it with another color balance and that's just by adding very minimal cyan and some green and then a nice hue and saturation on top of that again on color mode just taking down the saturation because it felt like it was uh, a little too saturated so I'll add a bunch of color corrects on top of each other until I start getting this to match and feeling like it belongs in the same environment and then at the end here what I did was just add a little bit more of a bluish kind of feeling as this went back in a distance it's getting a little bit more bluish and that's what I wanted to add uh, for those two guys just in the back there and you can see I painted in into my mask only where those guys were let's turn that off all right so now that I have that what I can do is now duplicate the same guy without any color corrects on and then create a high contrast mat for the light which is just grabbing my layer putting it on screen mode and then going into my curves curving this down until I separate out just the lights I want to slam the darks and only keep the lights so once I have that it looks like something like this if I turn it up that's what it looks like it needs to be color corrected of course so I'll throw a color balance on on color mode and hit it with a really light uh, bluish tone and then I'll go in there and adjust the opacity bring it down oops not of the color correct but of the light pass until it feels just to add a little bit of form here for the front face maybe it's getting lit by the moon and then a the shadow face a little bit more form and I did this I duplicated that again just to get a little more details in that fill side as well and I added the same color correct on top of that a little bit of light bloom, bloom there on the side just sorry light wrap just to get it a little softer and I can tone that down just a little bit so it's a little too heavy and we blocked in our our mountain on the side here So the next thing we want to take a look at is the building structure in the back and then we're going to go take a look at the vertical rocks and how that's integrated and how we can use elements to, to bring in the rocks, color correct them and make a match in this environment. All right, so let's take a look at how we can put together uh, a building at night. So what I have here is just a building that I had, uh, I built quickly in 3D. Um, I did the lighting in 3D as well. We're going to cover um, some of those steps uh, later on in, uh, in a couple weeks. So I'm not going to go too uh, detailed with it um, in this week. But um, just to show you guys how uh, we can add kind of light uh, lighting details to this and make this feel like it's a nighttime kind of building. I adjusted the values to, to kind of sit in the right place. Um, as far as value wise with the rest of the scene and color corrected it and then I added some lights. so let's take a look at some things we could do with uh, the lights so this is some of the reference um, some of this stuff uh, you can also find on CG textures um, this is just a collection of stuff that I have um, that I've used over uh, over the years I've collected so let's take a look I usually grab something like this and again you're looking for buildings at night with some lights on Oops. I'll bring that over and I'm going to do the same thing to extract the lights as I have been doing with everything else. I'll look for the high contrast which is the blue channel. I'm going to duplicate it and jump into curves here. I'm going to pick my black picker here. Just hit the light values and then 
bring up my lights manually here and that should be good so once I have that I'll control select it copy and I'll bring it into my shot and then what I'll do in my layer stack is I'll create a new folder and I'll call that lights so I know where everything is going and I'll paste it into there so I know all my lights will be on uh, one group one folder so it's, it came in massive because those are high res images so I'm just gonna scale this down until we have the right scale for this guy and looking at a reference the scale is pretty small for something uh, pretty big ours is even bigger than this so it's gonna be pretty tiny so we're looking at something at that kind of scale and I'll put it in there and you can either screen it on but screening usually loses the color so I don't typically like to do that unless uh, I see some really uh, black values that need to be cropped out but I think we matted this out um, right so we don't need that so I like the color so I'm gonna keep it that way and this is just an example so I'll just throw it in there maybe make this smaller because I think the scales too big still always thinking about scale now it feels a lot larger this building so once I have that what I'll typically do is I'll throw a curve down and I'll clip it on and we have to adjust the brightness because this thing is so far away and there's atmosphere back there really hazing things up that light intensity is not going to be the same as if you know it was closer to us so the atmosphere really knocks it down so we're going to pull the lights down and keep it at that level which I like and it fits in that scene it fits in this in space a lot better and if we want what we could do is we can erase out that color correct in some parts to make some lights brighter than others so just I'm just gonna paint into my mask because this will happen some lights are brighter than others it's more powerful and that will give us a little bit more of a um, a natural breakup and in, in in the lights there itself so we have that and that's generally how you add some lights and you can do you know horizontal or vertical lights up to you it's the same process that we did um, we just did so another thing I like to do is take a look at cities like New York City with a, a ton of high-rise buildings or skyscrapers and uh, just Google nighttime for it and it'll give us sometimes some nice high-res images that we can pull from and what I want from here is I could pull lights from here as well or and what I'm looking for in this scenario is these kind of things that's happening where the lights are illuminating that uh, the structure and you got a nice little kind of gradation so what I'm going to do is just take my lasso tool grab it copy and I'll paste it into my scene now the scale is large again so we're going to scale this down that didn't work scale it down maybe something like this oh squashed it stretched it by accident all right there we go this one I am gonna screen because there's black values in there now I could have also done this if I wanted to and graded this blue channel the same way and I'm just looking at this area here I'm lifting up the values that I think I want to retain I'm happy with that control select copy paste and then take my lasso tool 
and select that area. Both kind of techniques work. Let's say I want to keep this one. So I'll delete that guy. I'll bring this in. Scale it down. And you can see we lost a lot of the uh, the values in there, but screening it makes it come back on. So I'm going to keep it on screen mode. And then I'll usually throw a clipping mask on and paint exactly where I want it. I like the feeling that that kind of puts that in front of that. That's kind of a happy accident there. And uh, I'll take it. So depending on how high I want, I want this to go, I can paint this out or keep it there up to me at that point but I like that nice light in there and I'm gonna throw a curves because the values of the white is really bright for that distance so I'm gonna curve this down to somewhere about there and then throw a color balance on top of that on color mode and say I want this to be a little bit more green So we're starting to hit that, those values, sorry, that color. A greeny blue, kind of green cyan. And if I'm happy with that color, I'll keep it. And that's essentially how you add those nicer details as well. Now I can grab um, other stuff here and here too. I like this side plane. So I'll copy that. I'll paste it in. Screen that on and maybe I can use that for you know one of these side panels or something. And then again, be careful on how much uh, in that light intensity is. So I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to do this quickly on separate uh, layers. I'm not going to do it on a separate layer. Again, we can change the color if we wanted to. And we're good to go. So that's how you add details um, as far as um, lighting a night scene. Typically using a nice reference like this, pulling out mats like this where I can then easily uh, copy and paste things you know if I like this area I'll just select the lasso tool take it and paste it into my painting and uh, really detail this up so that's for that and even these are kind of like antennas that I have are from the same reference this guy right here took that out and put it into my painting and it works so there's that and then we're going to add some atmosphere to kind of blend this guy in. And one way to do this is I'll take a soft brush. And because this is really in the distance, we shouldn't see any texture or break up in that, uh, in the, in the haze. It's more haze than it is kind of clouds or, or mist. So it's going to be a soft brush. And what you see it, what it does is the plate or sky stuff always has a natural kind of digital noise to it and when I throw my soft brush down there is no noise so typically what I like to do is clip on a, a layer fill it with black and then go into filter noise add noise and then throw in a noise on top of that black layer see this is what it looks like and then I'll screen that on so the black disappears and then I'll adjust the opacity until it starts matching the noise that's in the plate something like that and what that does is gives it a nice natural breakup instead of that 
kind of soft brush Photoshop look. Now it feels a little bit more natural with that noise in there. And uh, you can adjust the opacity again as much as you like. And on top of that, I'm going to add some more light detail on the bottom there just to cut out the forms of the guys down there. And add a little bit of haste to this guy to push him a little further back. And that's all for the background there. So I blocked down my background and my plate. And now I'm ready to attack the foreground, add some vertical rocks, the, uh, the road with the car, maybe some haze to blend uh, the background into the foreground plate. And um, take a look at a vehicle we can put in here quickly and maybe some uh, smoke coming out of the ground, almost making it look like a volcanic environment. All right, so let's get into some of these rock structures. So let's turn on some of these other layers. So haze layer to kind of blend in the uh, background with the plate on top of there. Some more haze there, just again with a soft brush and the same kind of noise technique that I added. I decided to darken the foreground just a little bit to add a little bit more depth going into the shot. And that's just with a curve layer, curving it down and then with a nice, with the gradient tool. You can pick the gradient tool, set to black and white, and then drag up where you want that, uh, the gradient to be. That's how that was done. And then we get to the vertical rocks. Turn these guys on. So let's take a look at how we can integrate some of those elements in here. And those things are done by taking an element like this. I got this from cgtextures.com. And when you have an element like this and we want to extract this element, we'll take a look at the channels and you know, they're very close together. This is going to be a hard element to extract because the values are so close together. Now, if we took and took one of those layers and try to, let's say this one's darker and this one's lighter, we're going to get some really kind of hard results here. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of cleanup. And then even this is pretty hard with the edges. Um, it's just not going to happen. And you can go take a look at all these channels, but even this is it's pretty difficult to, to extract. So what I usually do with these is I'll just grab this uh, the lasso tool. And the reason this works is because I have a dark value against another dark value. So I can get away with my edges not being perfect in you know looking like a rock if it was something if my this rock element I was using was against the light background like this where I have dark against light that's where you're gonna see all the little details and it's gonna look really cut out if it's not perfect but in our case we can get away with the dark versus on the on top of the dark and we don't have to worry too much about the silhouette of that rock looking perfect so what I do is I grab my lasso tool and I'll just take about, you know, a few minutes, you know, usually five minutes going around and I'm not going to be super precise, but I'm going to try to stick within, you know, within reason with that rock and just quickly go around it and select the whole thing and copy and paste it. And what we have is this element here <clears throat> then I'll bring that element in and I'll put it on top of everything here I'll scale it down this is this element that I used you can see this the shape is the same <clears throat> just move this stuff out of the way And I'll start correcting this. So essentially what I have to do is relight this. 
and it helps that I have a little bit of lighting in here. It's not too harsh. It's not a bright sunny day casting hard shadows. It looks like it's a soft light because we have this face lit and then we have this shadow and that's going to help us because we have that moonlight kind of look that we want to hit and add some form to this guy. So we're going to relight this guy and what we do is throw our curves down. I'm going to go to my hue and saturation and I'm just going to slam this down to something very dark and I'm just focusing on the the shadows. So I want this to feel dark, dark enough to stand out against the ground because we don't want that value to be too close to the ground where it disappears. This rock is a different darker material than that sand so it's going to be reacting to light differently. The local color of this rock is darker than the local color of that sand so it's going to be darker and it's going to help us to to uh, silhouette this guy against the sand so once i block <clears throat> my uh my value in i'm going to take you know a little bit of a textured brush and i'm just going to paint out a little of the bottom so it looks like this element is kind of sitting in the sand there to help it integrate in and that's just on a layer mask just painting in with my my black whoops maybe the sand rides up in some places and in some places it doesn't so we have nice kind of transition now you can see my color is whack but the value is starting to work so what I'm going to do is throw on a, a curves this time and put it on color mode and I'm going to grab my red go into my red channel take my little picker there and sample the uh, a mid-tone color here and it lands us right around the bottom there and since that point is selected I can use my arrow key on my keyboard and just pull the red out pull the red out there now you can see it's starting to get green and what we have to do now is add some blues so I'm gonna go into my blue channel pick that point again and just lift it up you can see we're starting to get there now this feels like it could be a little bit darker and instead of adding to this I'm just gonna create another one because it gives me another kind of fresh curve that I can start from and then I can pull another color correct on just slightly so my color correct is still resting up there and now I want to throw on my uh, my light value my form so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that I'm going to apply my layer mask because the shape isn't going to change I'm going to put it on screen mode and then throw a curves on it clip it on and what I'm trying to do again is to slam the blacks it's looking for that right mix I want to get rid of a lot of the the midtones and just keep the highlights that's my goal here so maybe hit that to black there it is now let's see the midtones going down. So that's where I want to be around this area. And then I can go in there and adjust my opacity. But just turning it down about you know that value. We don't want to be too strong. And adjust my color by throwing a color balance. Putting it on color and giving it that nice cool moonlight by adding some cyan, some blues and we're good to go there's that element. The last piece of this what I like to do is I want to create a nice gradation between the bottom and the top of this thing so I'm going to create a curve throw it on top of everything 
I'm just going to lower the value of that, invert the mask so that it's at zero, grab my gradient tool there, and just go up slightly. And what that does is it's just going to darken the bottom a little bit where the light isn't going to be affecting it as much. So that's what that is doing. That's doing. And I'll group these together, and I should name them Rocco 1, let's say. And the last piece of this to integrate it is the actual occlusion and shadow that this is causing onto the ground. So with that, I'm going to throw curves down, put it in my group, and I'm going to lower this arbitrarily, invert, because I'll adjust it once it's in my, I can see it, invert it, take a soft brush, and just paint kind of an occlusion slash shadow being cast very soft because the source of that light is not a direct kind of sunlight but a soft moonlight so my shadows are going to be very very soft and if I feel like the value is too dark all I have to do is come back in here and pull that up a little bit of a softer and what I'll do too is I'll pull the reds out too so the shadow is nice and cool. Let's go back, maybe we want it a little bit darker. And now we have our rock element that we can move around and place wherever we like and it fits. And the same thing happened for all these. Grabbing different elements, all from CG textures. And doing the same thing, the same kind of color correct, the same relighting, and putting them in there. So once we have our rocks in there, we've placed them around, we've adjusted values, and you know when you go further back in the distance, your values are going to get a lot uh, lighter. So my blacks are matching what's around, and that's why that guy feels a lot further back. With that, I added a road, and that was just literally just using a line tool and kind of drawing it out and adjusting the value in the color drawing a little car here with the motion blur and some dust and that's my road quick and easy doesn't have to be detailed because it's so far away but we want to make sure it's getting that top light so that's why it's a little brighter and that's that rock and what I did was I brought in some smoke and that was from using this reference in here and that's just by going into my channel duplicating it and throwing down a curve to extract this guy out going in basically like that grabbing it copy paste and selecting just this area oh, it should have been flattened but that's essentially how I did it and brought it in and there's the element right there and again on top of it that's how it comes in and then we have to grade the value the color and adjust the color a little bit more until we get it right and it feels like it's sitting in there once we have that last but not least is the vehicles and the vehicle again was a a 3d model that I had that I put in uh, I matched the perspective in my uh, in my 3d scene to to this scene here rendered it out, had some 3D motion blur, and then added the the uh, jet engine there from a reference photo and just threw some motion blur on it and the same way just created a cloud brush to throw the dust in there. Uh, we could have used the elef element for this as well. Um, I definitely recommend it. Um, I was kind of lazy and I did it this way, but um, I think it works. We're not trying to pay attention. We don't want it too textured. 
and uh, it's relatively low value so we have a little bit of texture in there and and we're good to go a little bit of light uh, light interaction with that uh, with that uh, dust coming up so there's a jet engine duplicated this is the light pass on top and this is the smoke this is the occlusion and shadow and this is the uh, interactive light here we can pull down it's a little strong we can pull down there and we're good to go on that guy and uh, last but not least what I like to do is throw in um, some last minute color corrects overall which is just lifting my lights and darkening down my mids and then a little bit of desaturation but then when I brought it into flattened it out and I brought it into um, my film ref here I noticed that it needed to be a lot bluer so I adjusted it for that and we have our final image here so that's working with a plate and this week we're going to be doing the same thing for your assignment so let's go and take a look at that all right so let's take a look at your assignment for this week it's going to be something very similar to what i just did here it's going to be working from a plate and here's the plate that i'm giving you for this week and some art direction so let's take a look at this so this is the plate for this week and i want you guys to do an early evening lighting condition like we just did a simple straw roof hut sits in front of a big rock screen right so there's going to be uh, some kind of hut here with a straw roof and a big rock that uh, it sits in front of so we're going to have to extend the plate in the distance as well with the sky some mountains in the background whatever you guys think fits the scene that's up to you but this our direction has to be hit the lighting condition has to be hit the the hut with the straw roof that sits, that sits in front of a big rock screen right has to be hit and this character is a shepherd that herds a few sheep so there's going to be some characters that you might have to put in there as well and if you want to add some other rocks to help this sit in you're more than welcome to add some rocks some trees to create this kind of uh, nighttime environment and this plate has no harsh shadows it's almost a diffused lighting so it should be relatively easy to color correct into a nighttime scene it's pretty high res so um, you can definitely have uh, plenty of room to kind of play in there and um, try to stick to this as close as possible I'm going to be looking for how well you color correct um, and integrate your elements into the environment or the into the plate and um, looking for form in in your elements that you bring in as far as uh, the lighting now you can have the lighting come from anywhere like if you can if you want the moon back there um, you can uh, but again remember if the moon is there it's gonna light some clouds so what I recommend is having the moon kind of off screen so you're not faced with that challenge and you can have it coming from uh, left uh, left or right um, up to you but remember that it is a uh, uh, it is reflecting light and it bounces back and it's a light source uh, at nighttime for for elements on the ground so um, some stuff may have to be uh, uh, lit relit with that uh, light source in mind so again uh, early evening lighting condition a uh, simple straw uh, roof hut sits in front of a big rock screen right and there's a character which is a shepherd that herds sh a few sheep in there and then you can uh, do whatever you like for the background as far as the sky and uh, the landscape back there but keeping in mind um, the early evening light and the kind of landscape that this is the type of uh, type of mountains that will be back there and you're more than welcome to add more rocks if you like here 
and trees if you want. Um, that's up to you. All right. Have fun, and I'll see you next week.